What? What? Max Music Man? What? What now? Mm. Music method. <laughs> Come on in, y'all. Guys, we got a goofy song today. We are doing Last Kind Words by Geechee Wiley. Geechee Wiley, if you don't know this song, check it out. This woman uh, recorded in the 1930s, supposedly only six songs, but is um, one of the kind of first uh, people to like record the blues, right? There's all these legends behind her. Um, very mysterious. No photos of her, supposedly. Uh, read the little wiki page. It's not long. And once you hear it, you get it. This is a this is like a haunting blues song. It is awesome. Early recording, super grainy, really hard to hear. I tried my best. I, th I think I got, I got it pretty darn good. It took me a long time. I really struggled with this song, trying to kind of interpret it with the grainy recording. Um, and sometimes it's so hard to tell that like, you know what I mean? You got to make some interpretive guesses as to what's going on. This is not a beginner piece, all right? Check out the Travis Picking playlist. If you're new, don't start here. This song goes out to two people. Lena, I hope you're feeling better and doing well. Thanks for um, introducing me to this song. And my um, French friends, um, Margot Colinet, Margox Colinet. That French people can't spell, by the way. Margox Colinet. Hey, Margox Colinet. Uh, Margot, Margot, Margot Colonnais. Do you say the T? I don't know. You say the, you don't say the X. Do you say the T? I don't know. This is a great song. We're going to do it measure by measure. Um, you can jump ahead to the song right now, but I do want to say this for you newcomers. I've got a ton of content on this channel. We have Towns Van Zant, Blaze Foley, John Prine, Mississippi John Hurt. I'm really doing all these great folk Delta Blues classics. Um, so sub, like, search. Mike'sMusicMethod.com. You can sponsor songs. You can donate. All the tabs are free. What a guy. Um, and you can search my songs that way. If you go to the tab page on my website, got all the songs there. Um, word search. I'll put them in alphabetical order at some point. I really need to do that and categorize them by artist. But tons of content. Dive into the channel. Welcome. We do measure by measure breakdowns. Use the timestamps down below. Um, that way you can jump ahead and jump back. At the end of the songs, I do slow run-throughs. So you can maybe watch like eight measures together or the verse or the intro. So once you learn a part, jump to the slow run-through. Do the slow run-through. Practice it a bunch before moving on to the next part. And I encourage you to come back. This songs takes weeks to learn, especially this one. You ain't going to get it in a day, I assure you. If you want to sponsor a song, there's a song you've been dying to learn. Uh, then, then jump on my website and sponsor a song and help other people learn it too. But that's it. I'm going to walk you measure by measure through this song. Thank you, Lena. Hope you're doing better. Margot, thank you and yours. And let's do it. <laughs> measure one. I'm going to be in E standard tuning here. Gishi or Gichi is, uh, she's down tuned to E flat. So if you want to play along with her, you got to down tune, but... For the sake of ease and not making the hundreds of you down tune every time you try to learn this one, we'll just do it in normal E. First measure, <laughs> nearly straightforward. Uh, we're playing an E major, but it's like reverse Travis picking because what she's doing is she's brushing the top, uh, sorry, she's brushing the fourth, the third, and the second. So we got D, G, and B on an E major chord. Then she hits a sixth string. And that's like the most straightforward measure of the song, even though for a lot of people, the brush is hard. And it's like backwards, reverse Travis picking, or whatever you want to call it. So that's it. That's measure one. Measure two, we've got a B7, but I'm not worrying about having the pinky down on the top E string. So I've just got second fret on the A, first fret on the D, and then second fret on the G. Two, one, two, right, B7 without the pinky down. We start with a heavy thumb on four and three. Oh, let me play it one so you can hear it. So 
again, heavy thumb on four and three. Then you do pointer or middle on the second string open. So heavy thumb, then open on the second string. Now my thumb hits the fifth string, my pointer goes to the third. So from the top there. Then the thumb goes back to the fifth string. Then we go to the second string open again, back to the fifth, and then open. We lift our hand off the chord and we hit open on the third string. So real slow, three, four, thumb on four, second string, fifth, third, fifth, second, fifth, third, open. So a bit goofy, again, because the, the thumb pattern is like four and three, right? You got a heavy one on four. Five, 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 four. So you might just want to get used to that for a little bit. And then add them in. Four, five, 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 four, and five, and five, and five, and. One more time, really slow. Three, four. Measure three. This one is really goofy to hear and it stumped me for a long time. And this is like my best attempt here. So we came from measure two, we were playing open on that on that um, third string. Now you can think of it as a hammer on, um, but we're kind of putting it down at the same time. And I'm having a heavy thumb on four and three. So I got open in measure two, bringing down my one. And at the same time, I'm hitting my thumb on the fourth. Or you can just have a heavy thumb and hit four and three. In that case, it isn't technically a hammer on because I'm rehitting the third string. But that's what you're shooting for. Open, and I'm like bringing that first finger down, and at the same time, I'm having a heavy thumb on four and three. And that first finger is obviously going on to the first fret of the G string, the third string. Then it gets even goofier because we're hitting the D string again. I'm using my pointer finger there because it's on an upbeat, right? And typical Travis picking is like, right? Thumb, pointer, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, middle, whatever it is. The upbeats are not the thumb though, right? So we've got that hammer. And then I'm using my pointer finger to hit the second fret on the D string. So that's only the beginning of it and it's already confusing. Open, put the first finger down, heavy thumb, then put my middle finger down on the second fret of the D string, and I'm using my pointer finger to get that. It's already a really awkward kind of finger thing going on there. And we'll keep going with the measure. Now you just want to think about it as like, a, I don't know, I guess we're, we're kind of playing an, an E major chord here. Then I'm hitting six, a uh, string with my thumb. Then my pointer is going to play the third string, but I lift my first finger in the left hand. Because I'm going to hammer again and do the same thing where it's like open and right when I hammer I do a heavy thumb on four and three. If you can't do the heavy thumb, that's fine. Then it's a hammer on, but if, again if you're doing the heavy thumb, it's technically not a hammer on. I wrote it in the tab just so you could see that it's like we're kind of hammering down into it uh, regardless. So we got from that low E string uh, open the second string open. I'm using my middle finger there. Uh, then we're transitioning back to that B7 idea. So I'm doing two with my thumb on the fifth string and then my pointer hit is hitting two on the D or the yeah the G the G string third string. So it's like a B7 chord at the end of the measure there and I'm doing five three so from the top of the measure with that pickup for measure two, three, four. I hope you guys can follow. I'm going as slow as possible. 
Um, I just know that it's going to be hard for you, so I keep like second guessing that I'm explaining it well. I think I'm explaining it well, but each little bit is just going to take a lot of time for your fingers to understand it. It's confusing me a bunch too, so I'm there with you. Measure four, similar to measure two. We're coming out of that B7, so let's just hold that shape. I don't want to have you like rethinking more than you have to. So we were here before, just doing the B7 like that from measure three, and we're just going to continue with that, the two and the two. So I got five with the thumb, second string with the middle, then back to the thumb. So it's five, two, five. Then here we got to lift the chord, and we're like going back into that E chord idea where I hit the third string open, and I then I kind of put put down like the E chord, but only the first finger. So, so again, don't think of it as an E chord, even though we're gonna get there. It's that same idea in measure uh, three, rather, not measure two, measure three. Where I'm like hammering that first finger down and doing a heavy thumb. And I put this second finger down and I use my pointer finger, right? So we already talked about that. And then the measure ends, sixth string open, and then back to the third string with my pointer finger still down. <laughs> I, think, I think we're good, I think you're getting it. Let's try to put this all together and see if we really know it and already congratulations if you can do it. So we're gonna go for measure one through four, that's it. Two, three, four. you're hearing it now that she just does it real fast three four yeah keep working on it I know you can do it if you already feel a little out of your element, what I would do is maybe just really try to understand what the thumb is doing and do the chord changes. So first measure, you're just doing thumb, easy enough. But then we have this B7 and it's four, five, five, five. And then here you're like opening. I guess you can't just do the thumb because you can't really hear it. But I'm doing thumb pointer, open two. So in other words, I'm just making sure I really understand the bass notes and what my thumb is doing there. And then measure four is uh, Cause that's already hard enough to have that thumb pointer be happening on the same string. So that that's part of the hard part of it and it might be new for a lot of you. So practice that alone. So jump ahead if, if you feel like you got it, but measure three, I'll talk through again one more time. We're doing open and then the second fret on both on the fourth string and I'm doing thumb pointer and then thumbs on six. Oh, and that kind of goes out into an E chord right there, right? Thumb pointer, I'm like putting down the entire E chord and thumb on six, four, five. Then measure four is just B7 shape. Five, five, then back to what we just did. Open two, and then the sixth string. Thumb pointer on the fourth. Confusing, go slow. So measure five, we kind of start the verse here. We're coming out of that E chord. So let's do that. Um, just playing the E chord from the previous measure, I'm gonna pinch four and two with my thumb and pointer, and I immediately hit the first string open. So 4-2 on the D and the B, and then E string is open. Then my thumb goes to the 6th string, and then my pointer goes to the 3rd. Oh, oh, sorry, and right there after that little opening part. Then, once I hit the 6th string, I'm moving to an A minor chord. And then I go to the 3rd string. So practice that transition from the E, then to the A minor. So you have that 6-3 on the A minor. <clears throat> and then we pinch 6 and 2, but I have to lift my first finger because it's open. And I immediately hit the second string again, playing the, sounding the first fret there. 
So on that A minor from the low open, we have six, three, pinch, second string again. And it's up to you. A lot of players will do the same finger twice. I tend to alternate. So on that second string, I'm doing middle pointer, open one. Alternating the fingers there. And then it ends on the sixth string again. So that whole measure, three, four, E chord. Goofy thumb pattern <laughs> because it's four, six, six, six. Measure six, this one's fun and it sounds cool and it's not that hard. She hits a heavy A minor and then open on the first string. So that thumb's uh, really, you know, liberal there. Just hitting, you can almost hit all of them if you want to, but I'm hitting the D, the G, and the B. Then open with my middle finger or pointer. And then kind of the same thing we did in the previous measure, measure five, which is six, <clears throat> six, three. Then you pinch six and two, but you have to have the first finger lifted. Put that first finger right back down on the second string. Six again. So it ends the same as the previous measure. Three, four. sounds like the song, right? And it, you can get it pretty fast. Man, so dark and uh, brooding, huh? Measure seven, the goofiness continues. We still have that A minor, heavy thumb, open on the first string. Then we get this cool slide part. It's actually not that hard and it sounds pretty darn cool. So the measure starts the same, then we do six string open, and I'm sliding four to five, and I'm hitting it with my pointer finger. That's on the second string, four to five on the B string. So thumb, pointer finger sliding four to five, and then I'm pinching six and one with my thumb and middle. So it's six, pointer, and then thumb middle. And that's a four or five slide on the second string. Next time, it's just four or five slide and pinch again. Four or five slide, pinch again into measure eight. So one more time, seven in the beginning of eight here. Three, four. So we got that four or five slide how many times? Once, twice, three times. And then the fourth time, after you do the slide and the pinch on the fourth time, then you move your, you're moving over to the third string. You can use your middle finger, it doesn't really matter, but I'm sliding three to four now on the third string, and I'm still using my pointer finger here. And then I'm pinching six and two instead of six and one. So three, four, pinch six and two. Three, four on the third string, pinch six and two. And I'm doing pointer, thumb, middle. And you only do that twice. So maybe that's a better way to think about it. I know looking at the tab and the numbers can be really confusing. Uh, so I've got um, one, two, three, four, and then two of those. Cool. So from the top of measure seven, we're going to do this. Three, four. sounding, isn't it? We'll go right into measure nine here, which isn't that hard. Just kind of lettering that final chord linger. So I'm pinching six and two, and then immediately middle finger on the first string. So thumb pointer, first string, then back to six. And then you have to fret the third string, third fret. So third fret of the G string. You don't slide it though. So it's Six, then the third string. So one more time. And the second half of the measure, pinch six and two again, immediately the first string, and then just open. So the whole measure, three, four. One more time.
measure 10. It's a repeat of the sliding. All exactly the same of what we saw before, except this ending run in measure 11 here is. Yeah, so we have that pinch, six and two, which was there before, but then we do second fret on the G string, then open on the G string, then second fret on the D string. So if we put 10 and 11 together, three, four. Go right into that cool run. And you know, let them ring out. It sounds cooler if they ring out. You don't have to, but I think it adds a bit more beef to it. Boom. Donation pitch. Guys, I don't charge for any of my content. It's all free. What? Unreal. I spend, I don't know, four to 20 hours making one of these, you know, tabbing out the song, learning the song, doing it all. I feel like I'm one of the few people on the internet, sometimes the only guy on the internet who's giving really accurate tabs to these songs. And then to boot, I'm giving you measure by measure breakdowns of how to play them. And so it's a value for value model. Or you can think of it like the honor system. If you have 10 bucks to give a song, please give it. That's what I'm asking. But it's also the value for value model. Maybe you could be doing guitar lessons and spending 160 bucks every month. So maybe these videos are worth 160 bucks to you. I don't know. I'm putting it out there and I'm expecting you to give some value back. So consider it, you know, a cup of coffee, a cup of joe. Also, another way to think about it is as like a um, charitable thing. I know you're paying me and you're keeping my lights on and stuff. But uh, by donating, you're buying me time to make these videos so that I can keep them free. So that's another way to think about it. By you guys giving in, I don't have to have any paywall nonsense and everyone in with access to the internet, people hard on times, young kids who don't have the money, people who just can't prioritize music in their life right now, still gets access to this awesome stuff. So I really believe in the value for value model to all my patrons, everyone who's been giving on PayPal, Patreon, you know, snail mail. Uh, there's all those ways to pay. The links are down below also at mikesmusicmethod.com. Um, all the different ways to donate. So please consider, I, I feel like I'm uh, bringing high value, high content level stuff, good quality, certainly excellent quality tabs and whatnot. You might be annoyed with my hairdo, maybe not the best quality. I could, uh, you know, take, take cues from other YouTubers who are always looking handsome and well-dressed. But, you know, I got three kids and a day job, and I'm just trying to bring these videos to you. So pardon my ridiculous, uh, you know what I mean. That's it. It's a value for value model. Consider it. Let's go forward. Keep going with the song. Measure 12 is very similar to the end of measure 3. I think it's exactly the same. So let's play through it here. same little turnaround or whatever you want to call it that happened earlier. So I'm not going to explain the whole thing, but 12 and 13, again, if your tab, mikesmusicmethod.com, free to download. That's exactly the same as what we did at the end of measure three. So apologies. Now that I'm like teaching the whole song, I'm realizing like it, I did, probably didn't put the downbeats in the right places. So I hope that doesn't confuse a lot of you. Like when I'm looking at the intro, the song kind of fades in, at least on the version I'm listening to. So she probably did actually start with this. One, two, three. And then that, that um, what I have is the beginning of measure two is actually, was actually probably the pickup beat of measure one. So whatever, I know you guys aren't reading music, you're just looking at the tab and learning the numbers, but keep in mind, I kind of wrote these bar lines in the wrong places now that I like am doing this whole freaking video. <laughs> and I don't want to record the whole video. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It doesn't make a big difference. Um, if someone out there is really annoyed, I I'll take the time to rewrite it. But then, I but I just don't want to do that for the video because then I'd have to you know, sub in like measure number three, you know, I'd have to fix every single one. And I think that would just be an even more annoying than you guys just dealing with the bar lines in the wrong spaces. But let's do the ending here. You guys did the whole song and then we'll do some slow run throughs. Forgot to mention that whole thing repeats. Let's do the coda here in 14 and 15. We've actually seen them both before. I'll play them slow. Three, four, to the B7. Here 
and 16 it's different. Pinching six and one. Second string is open already. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Pinching six and one. Second string is open alone. Then I'm gonna do a heavy thumb on D, G, B, but my pinky is down on the second fret of the B string, so it makes it like a, an E6 chord, which is the classic ending. So I got pinch, put the hammer into the chord, or put that pinky down, then hit 6 and 2 again. So again, I have the hammer on in the tab, but that's only if you don't have like a really heavy thumb, if that's hard for you to do, you know, then it's a hammer on, but if you're hitting all of them, Clearly, it's, it's not a hammer-on, so don't let that confuse you. Yeah. Now, let's do the slow runs. This is going to be the most important part of this lesson, where we do these little things over and over and over and over again until we get confident with them, myself included. Slow runs. Let's do the intro, just one through four here on the tab. Two. Uh, and remember, you can start the song on that sixth string if you wanted to, depending how you were counting the timing, but I kind of start on the higher one. So three, four. One more time, and then we'll actually run right into the verse after that, starting from measure five to 13, and then we'll do five to 13 again. So we'll do the intro one more time. And then we'll run the verse twice. So three, four. Now let's do the coda. Well, how we're going to do that is we're going to take five, so start the verse, and then we will go through 11, and then instead of doing 12, you jump to the coda, which is measure 14 in the tab. So starting at five here, it's kind of weird without the pickup to just start here. Um, so let's actually, there's no good starting point in this song. That's what's hard. It all kind of flows together. Try your best to start from five, three, four. Let's actually just do the coda nice and slow from 14, 3, 4,